Welcome to the 2019 MSTEP Reports webcast for school and district assessment coordinators. This presentation covers the spring 2019 MSTEP reports that are currently available in the Dynamic Score Reporting site, which can be accessed through the Secure site. If you need access to the Secure site, please go to www.michigan.gov mstep and select the Secure Site Training Documentation link that is found under the Professional Development heading. In this presentation, I will begin by building some background regarding the type of data that is included in the reports on the Dynamic Score reporting site, as well as the difference between the overall performance levels and the claim performance indicators that are provided on the English Language Arts and Mathematics reports. I will review the different types of data that are provided in the various reports in the Dynamic Score reporting site. Next, the difference between performance level scale scores and claim performance indicators is examined and discussed. Then I will discuss the growth data that is provided on the MSTEP reports. When I discuss the reports, you will see what data is included in the student level MSTEP reports, followed by the aggregate level MSTEP reports. Finally, I will discuss the reports that will become available later this fall. There are two types of data reported in the MSTEP reports, student level and aggregate or group data. It is important to note that the type of data determines how the data in a report is appropriately used. Here we have the two types of data, student level and aggregate. Student level data is data reflecting one student's performance on the MSTEP. It provides the educator with a snapshot of what a student knows and is able to do relative to Michigan's academic standards at one point in time. Aggregate data reports measure groups of students' performance relative to Michigan standards at one point in time. This data can be used to look at program effectiveness, curriculum alignment, how a building's program is serving students in different demographic groups, or how a program serves students in one grade level over time. It can also be used to compare program effectiveness with one building compared to another building in the district, compared against the district as a whole, or even the state. It is important to note, both student level and aggregate data are important and necessary when considering the education schools provide Michigan students. However, Keep in mind the different types of data are intended for different purposes and should be used accordingly. Next, we will discuss the performance levels and claim performance indicators. The MSTEP reports provide information on what a student knows and is able to do in a content area as a whole, as well as for the claims that are within each content area in mathematics and ELA. Performance levels and claim performance indicators are what are used to report this information. Let's see what you already know. Pause this video and take a moment to write on a scratch paper. What are performance levels and what are claim performance indicators? Think about what they are, how they are the same, and how they are different. First, I will discuss performance levels. This slide lists and defines each of the overall performance levels for grades 3 through 8. These are based on the scale scores that determine whether a student scored advanced, proficient, partially proficient, or not proficient in the assessed content area. Each of these performance levels are based on what students know and are able to do based on Michigan's content standards. They are descriptors of content area performance. An advanced proficiency level indicates that performance has exceeded grade level content standards. Proficient indicates performance that meets grade level content standards. Partially proficient indicates performance that shows a partial understanding of grade level content standards. And not proficient indicates performance showing a minimal understanding of grade level content standards. There's a document on the MSTEP webpage at www.michigan.gov slash mstep under the reporting section called mstep and mme performance level descriptors that provides this information and information about all assessment performance levels. This is a sample of the performance levels as seen on the individual student level mstep reports. The scale score ranges for each performance level are shown below the graph. 
Also shown on this graph are the performance levels. Not proficient is shown in red, partially proficient in yellow, proficient is shown in green, and advanced in blue. These are the three claim performance indicators. Blue for students who are making adequate progress, yellow for students whose progress shows attention may be indicated, and orange for students whose performance indicates they are most at risk of falling behind. It is important to note that claim performance indicators are measured on a different scale than overall performance, and student claim scores are divided into three categories compared to four performance levels. For this reason, it is possible that a student could earn proficient or advanced performance levels while receiving attention or at-risk claim performance indicators. This is an example of the claim performance indicator bar. This bar provides context to the student's claim performance by showing the student's claim level performance relative to the range of possible performance for each claim. If a student scores attention on a claim, the educator can see on the bar where in the range of scores for this indicator the student scored. In the next slides, I will review growth score terms and the drill down feature of the dynamic score reporting site. Student growth data is reported on the individual student report, student overview, and student roster reports. Terms associated with growth data are student growth scores, growth target scores, and growth target time frame. Student growth scores were previously called student growth percentiles, or SGP. These scores describe a student's learning over time compared to other students with comparable prior test scores. Growth scores are percentiles that range from 1 to 99, with 50 being average. Growth scores indicate how many scores in the comparison group scored below that score. For example, a growth score of 60 means the student had higher growth than 60% of comparable students. Growth target scores were previously called adequate growth percentiles, or AGP. These scores represent the amount of growth necessary to reach or maintain proficiency within a set time frame. Growth target scores also range from 1 to 99 and represent the amount of growth a student needs in order to reach or maintain proficiency by the end of the growth target time frame. Consider a growth score of 80. This score means that the student must maintain a growth score of 80 or above in order to reach or maintain proficiency by the end of the growth target time frame. The growth target time frame is the amount of time the growth target model is projecting for the student to reach or maintain proficiency. Growth target time frames range from one to three years. This slide shows you the drill down path that is a feature of the dynamic score reporting site. As a note, users can begin drilling down on any report that has the drill down feature. It is not necessary to start at the comprehensive report. The user can select the school name on the comprehensive report to open the school demographic report for that school. The school demographic report drill down enables the user to select the link in the number of students assessed column to open a student roster report which includes the students represented in the aggregated group. While in the student roster report, the user can drill down further by selecting the student name to open an individual student report. Once a user is in the individual student report, selecting the student's growth score will drill down to open the student growth and proficiency report. This path applies to all reports except grade 3 ELA and math and grade 5 social studies. If growth data is not available for an individual student, the growth score is NA. There is no active link to drill down. After a user has selected the link to drill down into the next report, a breadcrumb area appears below the ISD district school entity information. Each report name in the breadcrumb is an active link. To return to any previous report, the user selects the report name in the breadcrumb. Next, we will discuss the MSTEP reports that are available in the Dynamic Score Reporting site. 
This slide lists the aggregate re data reports. Aggregate reports report the performance of groups of students and are helpful to educators in reviewing the effectiveness of programs and curricula in schools. The comprehensive report provides a comparison of student achievement among schools within a district. The demographic report provides a comparison of student achievement across demographic subgroups, such as gender and race or ethnicity. Both the demographic report and the comprehensive report summarize the mean scale score and performance levels for the total number of students assessed. The expectation analysis report provides detailed information on student performance in social studies. This report shows the number of students falling within identified percentage ranges of points earned over points possible for social studies only. The target analysis report provides relative strength and weakness information on target level performance for English language arts and mathematics. The science field test summary and claims aggregate reports are new reports in 2019 and will be available later this fall. The science field test summary report will display a box and whisker graph that shows aggregated raw score percentage quartiles and will include the mean and median of percentage of points earned. The claims aggregate report will provide aggregated claim score data, aggregated by school, district, and state. Overall performance and demographic group performance will be included in this report. A note about the science field test. In 2019, the MSTEP science test is a field test. Results from a field test are not intended to provide information on student achievement. Instead, field test results verify the adequacy of testing procedures and the statistical characteristics of new test items or new test forms. Field test data also informs the test development process regarding the quality and performance of the new items based on state academic standards. So the science field test reports, which will be available after the initial release of reports, will display district and state level aggregate raw score data. There will also be a science field test individual student report that includes raw score data as a percentage of points earned. Next, we will look at the student level data reports. You can see in this table the title of each report with a short description of each of the student level reports. The student record labels are printed and sent to schools as sticker labels for inclusion in the student CA60 folder. Additional copies are available on the secure site by selecting student record labels from the reports drop down menu. They summarize student performance levels in each content area assessed. Individual student reports, also called ISRs, are reported by each content area assessed. A student has a different ISR for each content area. Parent reports summarize student achievement by content area and are printed and sent to schools to be delivered to parents. This report includes a letter from Deputy Chief Superintendent Sheila Alice to parents regarding the report results and provides resources for parents. The student roster report provides overall proficiency information for the aggregate groups and for the rostered students and it also includes student level achievement data for educators in a sortable form. Educators can sort and filter by student name, scale score, and ELA or mathematics claim or social studies discipline while in the dynamic score reporting system. The student overview provides scale score, performance level, and claim or discipline information in a summary format for all content areas assessed. The student growth and proficiency report and the Science Field Test Individual Student Report are new reports for 2019 and will be available later this fall. It will provide student achievement and growth data including scale score, performance level, student growth score, growth target scores, and target time frame. The student scale score is plotted against the growth data. The Science Field Test Individual Student Report will provide raw score data by the percentage of points earned overall. This section will discuss in more detail the aggregate level student reports, which include the comprehensive report, demographic report, target analysis report, and expectation analysis report. 
Data on the MSTEP aggregate reports is no longer suppressed for fewer than 10 students. Be sure to follow FERPA guidelines when reviewing and sharing these reports with educators. This is a sample of the comprehensive report. The comprehensive report contains entity proficiency information by grade and content and is available at the district level. As shown in this example, the All Schools graph displays proficiency information for all schools in the district, and the user can also select one school to view a graph of the school's profi proficiency information. The number of students assessed blue link allows the user to drill down into the school level demographic report. Users can use the comprehensive report to view district or school-wide proficiency information. The demographic report provides a comparison of students by grade and content aggregated across user-selected demographic groups, showing the percentages proficient at each level. This slide shows an example of a school demographic report. You can see the graphs on the left highlighting the performance levels according to aggregate group. The All Students graph is the default view, and users can select any demographic subgroup to display a graph that contains the performance level data for the selected demographic group. In the table format, users can view and compare the numbers of students assessed, mean scale score, and percentages of all students, as well as in each listed demographic subgroup, earning not proficient, partially proficient, proficient, advanced, and the combined percentage of students earning proficient and advanced. The school demographic report includes a drill down feature that allows users to select the blue number in the number of students assessed column to open a student roster report. Next, I will discuss the target analysis report. It is important to note that the target analysis report is not like the other aggregate reports. It does not provide proficiency data. It reports relative areas of strength or weakness as compared to performance by the aggregate group on the test as a whole for English language arts and mathematics only. This report is only available for MSTEP, ELA, and math because they are adaptive assessments. The target analysis report is available at the state, district, and school levels. The blue upward pointing triangle indicates an area of relative strength. The yellow circle indicates that an assessment target is neither a strength nor a weakness. And an orange downward pointing triangle indicates a relative weakness, again as compared to the aggregate group's performance on the test as a whole. There is also an asterisk symbol that indicates there is insufficient data to report. On this report, in order to make a valid determination of the relative strengths or weakness, or neither, of an assessment target, there must be, at minimum, 15 unique students assessed per target, 3 unique items per target, and 25 responses per target. If any one of these requirements is not met, then an asterisk is, is displayed. The number of students assessed is displayed for the report. Next, the claim is displayed, followed by a list of assessment targets within each claim. The assessment targets are mapped to the claims and Michigan's academic standards in the crosswalk documents that are available on the MSTEP webpage at www.michigan.gov MSTEP. You can view these documents to see how the claims, assessment targets, and content standards are grouped. The right column displays the symbol representing the relative strength and weakness indicators for each assessment target. The target analysis report can be used to determine relative areas of strength and weakness for the represented aggregate, aggregate group, and it can be helpful when analyzing your survey of enacted curriculum. The expectation and analysis report provides the percentage of points earned by grade and content area expectations in each discipline. This report presents social studies data only for grades 5, 8, and 11. The report provides an overview of performance by content expectation. However, users should keep in mind that the number of items assessed on each expectation may be small. 
The table identifies the associated expectation assessed. Next, the number of students assessed in each expectation, the average percentage of points earned, and the number of students scoring in one of four percentage groupings, 0 to 25%, 26 to 50%, 51 to 75 percent and 76 to 100 percent are displayed. In this section, we will identify the information provided on the student level reports, the individual student report, the parent report, student roster, and student overview report. Student level reports contain federally protected student information. Therefore, the information in student level reports must be used in accordance with the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA. All of the images used in this presentation have been de-identified and used mocked up data so that no actual student performance information is shared. This is the individual student report with identifying information removed for privacy purposes. There are three main sections in the ISR, the Student Demographics section, the Overall Performance Level and Scale Score, and the Claims or Discipline for Social Studies. First is the Entity Information and the Student Demographic Information. This section details the school, district, and ISD where the student took the test. Next is identifying information about the student. You will see the student's name, grade, gender, date of birth, ethnicity, whether the student has a disability, is an English learner or former English learner, and whether the student received any designated supports or accommodations when taking the MSTEP. In the second area, you will see the overall content performance. This example is an ELA report. The student scale score is listed, 1704, and the student's performance level is indicated, in this case, proficient. You can also see the margin of error for the student's score displayed in gray. The margin of error shows the possible range of scores the student would be expected to receive if he or she took the test again on another day. In this case, we would expect the student score to be plus or minus 6 points of 1704, which is 1698 to 1710. Along the bottom of the performance scale, you can see the scale score ranges for each performance level. 1618 to 1678 for not proficient, 1679 to 1699 for partially proficient, and so on. Next, you see in table form the scale score, margin of error, performance level, growth score, SGP, growth target, AGP, and growth target time frame. Growth score data will be available after the initial release of reports. The third section has detailed information on claim performance. You will recall from a previous slide that the claim performance indicators are indicators of performance within each claim. The claim performance indicator bar shows how the student performed on the claim relative to the range of possible performance on that claim. In this example, you can see that the student has earned attention for the reading claim, adequate for writing, and attention for both the listening and research claim. Again, the claim performance indicators are used only for English language arts and mathematics. Because these are computer adaptive tests, raw score data, that is, points earned out of points possible, is not a valid representation of student achievement on a computer adaptive test. Below the claims area on the ELA reports only, the student's passage-based writing prompt raw score is displayed. This sample student earned four points out of four points possible. This individual student report is a social studies report. What is different for social studies from the ELA and mathematics reports is the disciplines reported. You can see that instead of claim performance indicators, there are raw scores reported, points earned and points possible sorted by discipline. In social studies, the disciplines are history, geography, civics and government, and economics. Raw scores are not comparable across different forms of the test. For example, four points out of seven possible points for student A is not the same as four points out of seven points possible for student B because raw scores are not equated across test forms. 
Also, when reviewing raw score data with relatively small numbers of items, be sure to use caution when making instructional decisions. On this page, you can see the raw scores for each content expectation reported. The discipline level is also reported, as it was on page 1, showing which assessment expectations belong with which discipline. In this example, the expectations highlighted are in the history discipline. As you go down the column of raw scores for each assessment expectation, you can see which expectations were answered correctly and which were missed by this student. Remember that this report provides detailed student achievement information about what a student knows and is able to do at one point in time. It is important to use formative assessment, classroom observation, and other local data when making instructional decisions for individual students. Summative, standardized, statewide assessments are intended to provide information about school and district, information about student achievement for use in program evaluation, and to inform school improvement initiatives or curricular decisions. Parent reports are printed and sent to schools to be distributed to parents. The parent report begins with a superintendent letter. This letter describes the information that can be found in the parent report and provides resources that are available to parents on MDE's MSTEP webpage. Science field test data are not included on the parent report. The superintendent letter contains an explanation for parents regarding the science field test. On page one of the parent report, is the overall performance information for English language arts, including the scale score and the associated margin of error. Next is claim performance information. Below the claim information on page one are definitions for common assessment specific terms found on the parent report. This includes a definition for claims, disciplines, claim performance indicator, and margin of error. Page 2 of the parent report includes the overall scale scores for the remaining content areas tested. This example is a 5th grade report, so ELA was reported on page 1, Mathematics on page 2, and Social Studies is also on page 2. At the bottom of page 2 are the definitions for the performance levels, advanced, proficient, partially proficient, and not proficient please go to www.michigan.gov slash mstep for a parent report video that reviews the parent reports in further detail. Next, we have the student roster report. The overall proficiency summary section of the report includes the number and percentage of valid tests scoring in each performance level for the state, district, school, and the roster of students based on the user's selections. It also includes individual student data for a selected group of students. There are extensive filter options on the student roster report. Users can build a roster report by filtering on grade, content area, reporting code, performance level, demographic groups, including gender, ethnicity, economically disadvantaged, foster care, English learner or former English learner, homeless students, migrant students, military connected students, students with disabilities, and by student name. Once the report has been built, the first row is the student name column. After the student names is a small i. This is a hover over feature. Users can hover over this i and view the student's UIC and date of birth. This is helpful when there are two students on a roster report with the same or similar name. Next is the scale score, margin of error, performance level, growth score, growth target, and growth target time frame. The overall scale score is also displayed in graph form in the next column. The final columns contain claim performance indicators for English language arts and mathematics, while for social studies it displays raw score data for each discipline. This will be shown on the next slide. On the ELA report, raw scores for the passage-based writing prompt are displayed in the final column. This view shows a student roster report with the points earned over points possible as is displayed on the social studies report. This view shows a student roster report that has been sorted by scale score by the user. 
There are multiple sort options on the student roster report. The student list defaults to alphabetical order. By selecting the word students, the list of students sorts to reverse alphabetical order. Selecting a second time sorts the reports back to alphabetical order. Users can also sort by scale score, shown here. Selecting the words scale score will sort the reports from highest to lowest scale score. Selecting a second time sorts the reports from lowest to highest. Users can also sort by growth score, growth target, or target time frame by selecting the blue column heading for each column. Another sort is the claim level sort. Each claim descriptor is blue, indicating they are links. The user can select a claim and sort by performance level indicator within that claim. Finally, on the ELA report, users can sort on the passage-based writing score by clicking the column header, passage-based writing, points earned out of points possible. Users can also select a student name to drill down into the individual student report for the selected student. This is the Student Overview Report. It provides summary student-level data for each content area in which the student tested on a single page. This fifth grade sample has English Language Arts, Mathematics, and Social Studies data. There are three sections shown in the Student Overview Report. First is the scale score graph. Like the other reports, the scale score is reported, along with the scale score ranges shown below the graph. The margin of error is represented by the gray band in the performance level graph. Next, the scale score, margin of error, performance level, growth score, growth target, and target time frame are all reported in the table below the graph. Finally, claim performance indicators are reported for English language arts and mathematics, and raw score data is reported by discipline for social studies. Next, I will show you a preview of the reports that will be available later this fall. For both the Science Field Test Summary and the Science Field Test Individual Student Report, it is important to remember that these reports are based on field test items. Field test data is used to determine how well the items measure the intended standards. The data is not intended to provide proficiency information. Decisions about school improvement goals, curriculum, or other program decisions should be based on locally developed science assessments that measure student achievement based on Michigan K-12 science standards and domains. The first of these two reports that I will show you is the Science Field Test Summary Report. This report is an aggregate group report that shows the raw score percentage of points earned by aggregate group. The range of observed scores within the aggregate group is sorted into quartiles. This sample is a mock-up of the Science Field Test Summary Report with a label with the data components labeled. This type of graph is called a box and whiskers graph and is useful for showing the distribution of scores within an entity. The report includes the school, district, and state, labeled on the x-axis. Each box represents the aggregate group for the reported entity. The blue box in the graph represents the interquartile range, that is, the range of scores observed in the quartile groups 2 and 3. A quartile is one of four equal-sized groups that the observed scores in the aggregate group are sorted into. There are the same number of students in each quartile who earned a score within the represented score range. For example, looking at the state aggregate group from this mock-up, 25% of students sc scored between 35 and 48%, 25% of students scored between 49 and 66%, 25% of students scored between 67 and 88%, and 25% of students scored between 89 and 98%. The interquartile range, that is the blue box, tells us that 50% of all students in the state aggregate group scored between 49 and 88%. The whiskers extending above and below the box represent quartile groups 1 on the lower end and quartile group 4 on the upper end. The lowest point of the whisker represents the lowest observed score in the aggregate group, and the upper point of the whisker represents the highest observed score in the aggregate group. There is a dot in each box. 
The dot represents the mean or average percent of points earned for the reported aggregate group. The horizontal line in each box represents the median percent of points earned in the reported aggregate group. This is a mock-up for the science field test individual student report. Overall raw score percentage of points earned on the MSTEP science field test is displayed as a graphic shown here. Again, this is not proficiency information. It is raw score information based on field test items. Schools and districts should use locally developed science assessments when measuring student achievement based on Michigan's K-12 science standards. Here you see a mock-up for the claims aggregate report. The claims aggregate report is for ELA and math only because social studies has disciplines, not claims. In the top of this report is the claim summary area. Each claim is listed in a row and the number of valid tests followed by the percentages of students in each claim performance indicator category are reported in a table. The percentage most at risk of falling behind at attention may be indicated and adequate. The final column displays the same data in graphic form, showing the percentages of valid test scores in each perfect claim performance indicator. The hover feature will show the number of valid tests and percentage for each claim performance indicator. Next, each claim is reported by demographic group. The claim is listed on the table and the percentages of each claim performance indicator are displayed for the whole aggregate group and for each reported demographic group. The demographic groups in this report are the same demographic groups that are reported on the demographic report. There will be a separate table and graphs for each claim in each content area, ELA and mathematics. The graph displays the percentages of students at each claim performance indicator for all students, and you can select any demographic group to view a graph with the percentages in each claim performance indicator. This is a mock-up of the student growth and proficiency report. First displayed is the overall performance level and scale score for the content area. This is displayed in graphic form and in table form. The table includes scale score, margin of error, performance level, growth score, growth target, and growth target time frame. This section of the report is the same as displayed on the individual student report. Next, the student's growth data is displayed in a graph. The x-axis represents the growth scores, labeled 0 to 100 at 10-point intervals. The y-axis represents the scale score, labeled at each performance level cut. You'll notice two bold black lines. The vertical black line denotes the 50th percentile in growth scores and divides lower growth and higher growth. On the y-axis, the bold black line represents the proficient performance level. Students below this line have not met proficiency, and students above are proficient or advanced. Each category of the graph is displayed by the color variations that are labeled to the right of the graph. The lower left box represents lower growth and lower achievement. The upper left graph represents lower growth and higher achievement. On the lower right, you can see higher growth and lower achievement. And in the upper right is higher growth and higher achievement. The black dot in the graph represents the reported student's growth score plotted by scale score. The growth target is noted by the dotted yellow line. This is the student's target growth in order to reach or maintain proficiency within the identified time frame that's reported in the table. In this sample, the student is in the lower growth, higher achievement category, and the growth target line indicates that in order to maintain proficiency, the student needs a growth score of 22. At the bottom of this section is a legend that provides definitions for growth score, growth target, and growth target time frame. Finally, if you aren't already getting the spotlight in your email every Thursday, be sure to sign up. You'll receive weekly up-to-date information about upcoming deadlines, assessment task reminders, updates about the administration of the assessments, report information, and much more. You can follow the link on this slide or go to the MSTEP webpage 
at www.michigan.gov mstep and scroll down to select the spotlight icon to sign up. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us by email at mde-oeaa at michigan.gov or by phone at 1-877-560-8378 and select option 3. Thanks for watching!